Could you show an example of looking at a gem? Yeah, absolutely. So for instance, Ball Lightning of Static. There were unknown things that, about it prior to the league, which was how, do, how long is the duration and how large is the AOE. These were two things that we absolutely had to assume. This is not something that POB will tell you. This is something that you have to experience. AI, the example of how does it work mechanically? I know that the duration is two seconds now, and I know that it we cannot scale it because there is no duration tag on it. And we know that the size of the area of effect is the same as a regular ball lightning. So what do I look at as a baseline? We got the level 20 gems and all of the information that we needed from it. So what am I gonna be looking at? I'm gonna be looking at the base damage. Is this high enough base damage? Does it have enough crit, depending on the sort of build that you're going to be playing? Is the cooldown a large enough downside? And is the cast time going to be an issue on a totem or on a self-cast build? So these things all work together. So first of all, I would start with the damage. So I look at the base damage and I look at the damage effectiveness. The base damage is incredible. Because you have to understand that Ball Lightning hits every 150 milliseconds, which means that you're squeezing about six times the damage in the DPS window. So an ability that I like to use as an example is Fireball, because it's incredibly straightforward. Everybody understands how strong Fireball is. Everybody understands how, how much it scales and all this sort of stuff. So I would look at Fireball and I would say, oh, Fireball's got, got about 2,000 uh average damage right and then it's got a 0 75 cast it's got six crit and 370 effectiveness that's so much effectiveness typically on an ability you wouldn't see that much but is this real effectiveness because 370 percent effectiveness you would calculate the effectiveness per one second so is this number actually that big i don't know it's about 500 effectiveness per second yeah so now we look at our base damage we got 2,000 here. We've got six times the average of what we have here. The average being 550. And we times that by six. So already we know that that's like 2.7K. That's, that's like much larger than Fireball. Almost 50% more. Then we look at the damage effectiveness. Yeah, it says 90%, but it's times six. So already, that's a giant amount of scalability that we have because we have we can have multiple of these planted, especially if you're using a totem setup. So what would be... If we know now that it hits hard as f So what are the limiting factors? The crit is low, 5% is lower than the usual 6 or sometimes even 7% in the case of regular abilities, which would indicate to us, okay, crit scaling is possible because of the amount of raw damage output that this thing has but it will make gearing difficult we look at the cast time zero seven all right the cast time is pretty standard however the ability has a cooldown and the cooldown is every 150 seconds or one and a half seconds and we get three uses of it the fact that it's got uses already is super strong compared to something that doesn't have uses but potentially lower cooldown for instance if this ability would have a three times lower cooldown, but it would ha only have a single use, this skill would be fucking shit in literally every single scenario, with maybe the exception of totems, in which case it would probably work or something that can automatically proc repeatedly, right? Because it wouldn't work on traps, it wouldn't work on mines, it wouldn't work on any of these things. So, how do we best utilize the cast time that is decent and the cooldown? You put it on a totem. And now you can fully utilize all of the damage that this thing outputs while simultaneously not having to worry about the limitations because the biggest problem with totem builds is the reduction in cast speed. But because cast speed technically is a downside here, we don't really, we don't really have to worry about it. So yeah, you look at this as long as you know, and then again, we know that it's a two second duration, which means that on top of everything that we just discussed, as long as the mob stands still, which 99.9% .9 of things stand still in this game, 
especially if we're talking about boss this one cast gives us one hit right but this one cast gives us two hits because the duration is two seconds so you know how we calculated everything per one second by ballpark this hits for two so every cast is twice as strong as we just math out it's crazy right so you can you can immediately tell that with a skill like this it would be very very good but then if you were to compare it to clacking lance of disintegration so we saw the divine ire of disintegration and those numbers looked really good so now we look at this one release a concentrated beam which deals lightning damage to enemies in a long area in front of you okay we can automatically assume that this is literally what the max stage crackling lance setup is it's just a beam yeah deals 844 to 2532 lightning damage this seems like a much bigger number than ball lightning 25 percent chance to shock enemies mostly negligible because if you're playing a lightning build you're shocking enemies regardless and you're shocking bosses and everything but because we know that this is a hard hitting ability we know that the shock can go up Plus 20% to maximum effect of shock. More shock, more damage, looks good. So why is this a gem? Because we're looking at everything else. Damage effectiveness. 300% with a 0.75 cast time. So it takes longer to cast. And it's less than half of the effectiveness of ball lightning. And then the crit is slightly larger because it's 6%. But that's only 20% more. Is this actually significant? Not really. So now, if you were to compare the average damage, it's only like, what, 1600? So you get 1600 damage. So that's half of the ball lightning, assuming a one second cast. But if we're hitting for two seconds with this, then it's like four times worse <laughs> already. So the damage effectiveness, the scalability is four times worse. And the actual damage is four times worse. And the only things and the cast time is also worse. And the only things that you can make up for it, which means that you're standing still longer and you can't just like put it down and you don't have a cooldown or anything. So in a way you can't spam, but that like forces you to stand still. The biggest problem that people have when they're making their POBs, and especially this is the POB warriors, is that they go to POB and they calculate their damage. And yes, if you were to put this ability into POB and you were to put ball lightning of static into POB, this ability would deal double the dps but would it actually be doing that in a real fight absolutely not there's no way this would even come close because not only do you have to stand still and go bang 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 instead of casting one ball to get the maximum dps because you're making up for the difference with the cooldown but also you're just dealing as an absolute baseline like four times less damage so this immediately i mean don't get me wrong like this is overpowered but this immediately by any standard of any gem even if we're comparing it to fireball it is just worse it's got like perfect fireball would be perfect it's got less effectiveness it's got the same or longer cast time it deals noticeably less damage and then the only upside is shock versus a fireball that can also get shocked but also you can ignite with it it's like it's just not a comparison and it's not like fireball is like a top skill right so if you're comparing to fireball it's worse it's got less possible ways of scaling and fireball is not a good ability in the first place so it's like i don't know you don't need pob to look at these things because you can just even if you just ballpark the numbers it's that you don't need like real numbers with it and thinking about it long and hard as long as you understand the mechanics and like even you have like a baseline gem that you're counting from then yeah so yeah again find something that you are very if you're making a build you've played poe before you're trying to judge whether a, a gem is good or not whether you want to play that ability find something that you're familiar with already so again in my case i used fireball because i've played this game enough to know every gem but think about something that you've played think about something that you're experienced in and then just compare it it could be fireball it can be crackling glance it can be ball lightning it can be anything that you're just familiar with and think like oh was this good was this bad what did i use here what can i use there like you don't have to see the numbers so i guess that's the only other thing that you need to know is like how fights work in poe and the way that fights work is the enemy doesn't move 
and you gotta be able to move. That's it. Those are, I guess those are the only two rules. You move, enemy don't move. Could you put crackling glance on totems? Sure, but you remember how the upside to crackling glance was the fact that it doesn't have a cooldown, which means that you're repeatedly casting it over and over and over and over. That's the problem. Spell totem reduces your cast speed. So if your power comes from the fact that the ability is spammable and the ability requires a lot of cast speed to work in the first place, Something like a spell totem isn't going to work. You could probably put this on like a trap or a mine. But then the question, the thing about totems is that they target everything automatically. But generally they're weaker and they have the boot up time. Right? You have the activation time before they begin to actually attack. On traps and mines, you don't have that problem. However, on traps and mines, one of the biggest concerns that you're always going to have is targeting. How... Does the trap, when I throw it, hit everything on the screen so that I can play a real build? In this case, it probably can't do that well enough because it's just targeting the nearest thing. And if there's somebody slightly to the left, it's not going to hit it and blah, blah, blah. So, I, But like, if you were to just worry about single target and want to swap gems, like, I don't know, you're playing arc traps. And then for bosses, you swap up to crackling lance of disintegration. Yeah, Crackling Lance of Disintegration on a trap would probably do a lot of damage. For sure. Because then you're bypassing the cast time for a more favorable cast time, because that's just how trap and mines work. The crit is really high. The damage effectiveness is good if it is on a trap or a mine. But then, why would you do that when you can just play poison, you know? Why not take an ability that hits better and just use poison and then you got on a trap and now you're doing way more damage, right? There's better skills, but this would work. Like this would be a fully functional build and it would do everything and it wouldn't really be a problem.